Hello and welcome to this edition of Market Guru. Joining me today is Rakesh Arora of Macquarie Capital Securities. Thanks very much, Rakesh. Always a pleasure talking to you on the show. Was just uh, going through your more recent uh, report uh, where you talk about I on India, fad or faith. You've uh, concluded a recent set of interactions with multiple FIIs across Asia. So what is it? Is it fad or still keeping the faith? Yeah, see, FI inflows have been extremely strong and, uh, you know, it continues to drive the Indian markets. And, uh, I mean, across the spectrum of uh, investors that I met, I mean, almost 60% of the investors uh, have now moved to a neutral position in India from a big underweight that they were carrying. And uh, only, you know, 5% has actually gone overweight. Uh, still around 20, 25% are, uh, you know, still underweight and are looking to, you know, add uh, into India's uh, portfolio uh, whenever there's an opportunity. So I think that uh, clearly the sentiment for India uh, among the FI investors have been, uh, you know, changing. And uh, now people are talking about uh, recovery and in investment cycle, interest rate cuts, and uh, probably GDP growth going back to, uh, you know, 7% plus in the next three year period. So there is positive mood uh, out for India and uh, more specifically that uh, there have been concerns coming on, uh, you know, Chinese growth. So India is uh, benefiting from uh, that kind of uh, doubt being created uh, around China. Mm. So what's the sense that you've got, uh, Rakesh, we've got two months to go to this calendar year. Do you see continuing FII inflows even in these two months? Yeah, see, uh, FI inflows uh, oh, would continue and uh, we think that, uh, you know, there's a QE3 going on every month, uh, $45 billion is being infused into the market uh, and uh, India would continue to attract uh, its own share of, uh, you know, inflows. So, uh, we see continued inflows uh, coming in and uh, we see strong supports to the market on all declines. Mm. You were among uh, many who were expecting a 25 basis point kind of a cut uh, from the RBI this time round. That hasn't happened. Uh, do you think there is reason to be extremely disappointed or do you think that uh, by and large the direction seems to be reiterated by the governor? Uh, see, uh, we were expecting a 25 bip CRR cut and which has come through. Uh, though, you know, market got uh, really excited uh, a day before and uh, people were talking about a 50 bip cut uh, even in the, uh, you know, repo rate. So clearly there was disappointment in the market, uh, but I think uh, RBI has uh, made it very clear that uh, inflation remains a concern still. And uh, they are going to take, uh, you know, calibrated steps uh, to ease the uh, monetary policy and which is what they are doing. I mean, interest rate have already started coming down, uh, you know, uh, since uh, the kind of uh, sharp cuts in CRR that we have seen in the last, uh, uh, you know, few months. And uh, so that interest rate cut cycle is already on the way. And, you know, just hearing to the RBI governor, may, uh, he's making it very clear that, um, you know, interest rate cuts will continue into future. So I don't think, uh, you know, there's any kind of a major disappointment. Uh, it remains on track. It is just that the trajectory is, uh, you know, more gradual and not a steep one, which, you know, market was starting to expect. Rakesh, coming back to your more recent report, uh, you've uh, done this analysis, which shows that uh, as far as the FII holdings in BSC top 200 are concerned, they are now almost at the last scene was December 2006. That's a six year high in that sense. Uh, what does this tell you? Uh, see, uh, clearly it tells us that uh, FIs are believing India story more than the Indians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, But I think uh, the major issue is that uh, domestic mutual fund industry has been going through its own issues. Uh, they haven't really seen any major inflows. So clearly FIs are becoming a main driver. And secondly, uh, retail investors also have been, you know, uh, staying away from the market, uh, having uh, lost, uh, you know, uh, a large part of money in uh, 2009 crash and uh, uh, having, you know, uh, made more money in other, uh, you know, places like gold. So uh, there's a general uh, apathy from the domestic investor into the market, uh, which would change, you know, once, uh, you know, market starts uh, doing well. And already I uh, think that, uh, you know, 
uh, that's starting to change on the margin. So FIs continue to remain the big driver at the moment, and uh, I mean, I think in the near term uh, they will continue to push uh, uh, the market ahead. Hmm. And you also say that uh, it seems to be across the board sectorally, except for telecom. Yeah, so the buying has been across the board. Uh, so initially, you know, FIs were more concentrated on the consumption sectors, uh, largely, uh, you know, FMCG, uh, autos, and uh, to some extent, financials. Uh, but this time in the last quarter, they've gone across the board. So that's why you're seeing a much more broad-based rally. A lot of people are pointing that despite uh, the huge inflows, the market hasn't really moved much since September. Uh, but you know, if, you, if you look within the market, uh, you know, some of the cyclical stocks are up 30-40%. So the composition of uh, the growth is becoming much more broad based. It is not just limited to the consumption sector. Uh, financials remains their biggest overweight. And uh, you know, I think uh, given the paucity of uh, you know, reasonable companies in the industrial space, where they would like to go long, uh, they are uh, you know, playing it through financials. And uh, they are still holding on to their uh, defensive uh, names in the consumer uh, staples. So overall, I would say that uh, it's an all-round uh, you know, uh, buying into the Indian market. And uh, I mean, that tells you that you know, probably the markets are bottomed out and there's a, a genuine interest. It is not some pocket of strength. What is your own view on financials, Rakesh? I remember when we last spoke uh, back in March, uh, you had a very contrarian view. When everybody was going gung-ho, you were the one who flagged off concerns about uh, NPAs, about uh, distress, because largely the economy uh, and the larger environment was not uh, very conducive at that time. But uh, in your report, you've written that uh, FIIs, and you just mentioned, are uh, extremely overweight and has become a favorite again. So what is your own view? Do you think that the pain or the, and we've seen several numbers coming out, we've seen some action coming in from the RBI as far as the entire restructured assets, provisioning, etc. is concerned. What is your own sense? Are you still circumspect or do you feel that uh, the worst is over? No, actually we uh, have already uh, moved, you know, a slight overweight on the banks. Uh, but see, banks remain a two-speed uh, you know, two uh, kind of sector. Uh, private sector banks are doing extremely well, whereas uh, public sector banks are under you know, a lot of weather. You saw uh, you know, the sharp uptake in NPLs uh, for you know, PSU banks across the board. So I mean, every quarter we think that the NPL cycle is peaking on, but uh, it continues. So I would say that uh, there's still a little bit of caution on the PSU banks, but private sector banks are doing pretty well. And uh, two stocks which have really you know, caught FIs attention is ICSA Bank and Access Bank. So you know, FIs are focusing still on private sector banks only to gain exposure. Uh, you know, PSU banks, they're still you know, uh, not as excited. So I think PSU banks would pick up uh, you know, once the NPL cycle has peaked out in the next uh, two quarters or so. Uh, but at the moment, I think it is private sector banks uh, which remain in a focus. Hmm. You also talk about certain sectors on which FIs are underweight, Rakesh, uh, which uh, include energy, IT, industrials, materials, utilities, and healthcare. How would you assess these sectors according to you? Uh, see, uh, given that uh, rupee was start starting to strengthen uh, IT and healthcare, uh, you know. Uh, being the large exporters were coming under pressure, uh, though that trend has been reversed a little bit and, uh, you know, stocks are taking a breather here. Uh, so I think uh, that was the right strategy on part of FIS to reduce some weight there. Uh, utilities, uh, again, meaning uh, there aren't enough investable stocks. So um, FIS are really looking at something like PFC, REC, you know, some of the PSU banks which are directly levered to uh, power sector uh, to play that story. Uh, so, I mean, it's a rather, uh, you know, question of uh, having a reasonably investable idea uh, and, uh, you know, that's what is really keeping that underweight on utilities. Hmm. And you talk of consumer staples uh, moving towards neutral and is that uh, largely more because some of these stocks have run up so much and are extremely expensive or is there a question today on future growth? 
No, actually, I mean, uh, FI holding has not really reduced as much uh, uh, in these consumer staples, and uh, recently there has been, uh, you know, a drop in a lot of commodity prices like palm oil prices have gone down dramatically. So, that should benefit uh, consumer staples margins. So, I do not think they are in a hurry to really uh, trim exposure here. Uh, but yes, uh, they have run up quite a bit and uh, valuations are looking a bit stretched. And I think uh, if the market is going to perform as we are predicting, uh, they would underperform the market. So, we are not saying that in absolute level they are going to fall as much, but uh, probably they will not go up along with the market at the same speed. Talking of uh, earnings, Rakesh, uh, you have written in your note that the result season has been supportive till now with no real big surprises. Uh, how would you describe this uh, quarter? Because most people thought that this would be the quarter where all the negatives would really come out and it would hit the lowest and then from here on things would get better. There have not been any shocks as such uh, is what you have written. How would you read the quarter so far? Well, see, apart from the PSU banks, uh, the results have been, uh, you know, in line or slightly ahead of what uh, Street has been uh, forecasting. And I think this quarter would mark, uh, you know, a change from the previous trend <coughs> where we were seeing almost 150 to 200 BIP margin compression. Uh, this will be the first quarter where we will see that the margin compression, uh, you know, is not visible and probably there is a margin expansion. So. And secondly, this quarter also tells you that uh, the expectation on earnings growth has gone down to a pretty low level. So, for FI 13 and FI 14, consensus is sitting at around 10 percent and 12 percent earnings growth, uh, which is uh, way lower than even the nominal GDP growth that we are expecting. So, we see very little downside uh, to consensus estimates from, you know, uh, from these levels. And uh, with interest rates starting to come off a bit and, uh, you know, global inflation coming down, uh, there is a possibility that we start uh, seeing some upgrades into FI14. Well, ideally, we would have, uh, you know, s like to see some uptake in FI13 had RBI cut interest rate aggressively. But since that is uh, now out of picture, uh, probably FI14 uh, where, you know, everybody is now going to focus on, there is a chance that we start to see uh, some earnings upgrade come through. So, clearly, you know, these results would, uh, you know, mark a change in trend in terms of earnings growth. I remember again when we last spoke back in March, Rakesh, uh, when everybody was still holding on to the belief that we will end FY13 with about 15 percent kind of earnings. You actually said on this show that uh, you are going to be predicting no more than single digit and that is pretty much where we have ended. But for FY14, now what is your own view? What, what is it that you are looking at in terms of earnings? Because again, in September end, you put out a report where you have lifted your nifty target to 6,600 based on a 15x on FI14 estimates. And I remember in March, you had told me that uh, on the upside, you were probably looking at a 56 to 5,800 kind on, of a range on nifty on the upside. Yeah, so now we have moved forward uh, to FI14 earnings and uh, that was the big change uh, in terms of our target price. And uh, secondly, you know, now uh, inflation has come off a bit and as I was saying that uh, chances of uh, margin expansion plus interest rate cut driving earnings growth is uh, far more visible. And at the same time, government is making serious effort to kick start the investment cycle, uh, which should be, you know, good for growth. Um, you must have noticed that, you know, SBI is claiming that in two months time since they have cut interest rates on home loans, uh, meaning their growth has tripled. So, there is enough demand and, you know, I think uh, once the interest rate cy cut cycle becomes more entrenched, uh, you know, growth would return back to the, uh, you know, companies. And uh, so, FI14, I think 12 percent hardly any risk, which is where we are basing our 6,600, uh, you know, target. And if the margin expansion and uh, earnings growth really comes through uh, with help from interest rate cuts and all. Uh, probably, you know, we can see even higher levels. That is about a thousand points from here on. Over the next, you would say what, two to three quarters? That is correct. I uh, know, see, this is, a, you know, March FI 14. So, um, you know, it is kind of a 12 month plus, mm. uh, you know, target. And obviously, it will depend on how the execution in the investment cycle really picks up.
what are the big negatives that you're looking at? And in fact, I want to take on from there. You've said, for example, key themes to play power sector reforms, very critical. We've seen the Prime Minister's office involved over almost now a year, Rakesh, but actually on the ground, very little has changed. And then you've talked of uh, interest rate cuts. We haven't seen that deep kind of rate cuts yet. But yes, uh, the direction seems to be very clear. And then you've talked about infrastructure spending again. Uh, a bottleneck, really, so to speak, because while the government's talked about this NIB, talked about expediting approvals, so far we are yet to see anything on the ground. Yeah. See, on the power sector reforms, uh, we have seen critical steps being already taken. Meaning, uh, in the last six months, all state electricity boards have raised tariffs by more than 20%. So that's a big change. The second change is that Coal India has increased the supplies uh, to power sector by 12% in the first six months of this year. So that's the second big change. And the third uh, change is that uh, SAB loan restructuring has already been uh, you know, uh, proposed and is on, on the way right now. So I would say that 60-70% uh, you know, of the issues in the power sector have been dealt with. And uh, so clearly that is marking a bottom. In terms of order inflows to power sector, meaning uh, FI12 uh, uh, saw only you know 2,500 megawatt. Uh, we are expecting around 8,000 megawatt this year and around 12,000 megawatt next year. So we are going uh, back in terms of recovery, in terms of order uh, you know growth in uh, power sector. Probably not uh, reaching the same level as uh, you know some 17,000 megawatt at the peak that we did uh, during the bull cycle. But you know from a low level, we are starting to recover. So power sector, I would say that enough steps have already been taken and government is continuously working on it to resolve the remaining issues. So, uh, you know, it is only a matter of uh, time, uh, the direction and uh, is uh, very much uh, uh, in the right way. Now, uh, coming to the interest rate cut, uh, I mean, obviously, as I told you that uh, the trajectory is slightly gradual, uh, but, you know, is uh, on the way and, you know, RBI governor has clearly reiterated that, uh, you know, there is possibility of interest rate cuts uh, when they meet next in the next quarter. So, I mean, there's no real reason to uh, be despaired about it and uh, interest rate cuts are already on the way. And uh, the third theme on the infrastructure side, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, NIB is uh, one of the key things that we are waiting for. And uh, the cabinet note has already been circulated. Uh, we have seen, you know, objection by some of the uh, ministers. So it is work in progress and hopefully it will come through in November. Uh, and uh, see, investment cycle, uh, I mean, it really takes time to, uh, you know, get the data from what's happening on the field. Uh, but uh, from what we are hearing, uh, you know, see, railways uh, uh, post this change, uh, you know, they are going to be uh, slightly better in terms of financial position. Already they have got funding lined up for uh, the dedicated freight corridor, which is a $20 billion project. So, uh, we are hopeful on railways, uh, road government itself is uh, looking to fund 4,000 kilometers. Uh, remember that we don't construct more than 2,000 kilometers a year. So, 4,000 kilometers being funded because private sector is not really able to fund at the moment. So, road sector, there is going to be a big impetus. And uh, power sector, we already discussed. So, these three are almost 80% of infrastructure space. And, uh, uh, you know, we expect private capex to really pick up next year. Uh, because currently capacity utilization for major industries is now running at around 85% plus and uh, private sector would have to pick up capex by next year otherwise they run out of capacity in two years time so uh, you know that would really you know follow on from the infrastructure capex which we are expecting to pick up now all right rakesh we leave it there thank you very much uh, for coming by and sharing your perspective with our viewers here on okay. bloomberg tv india